Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. First, let me tell you, that video yesterday about the toilet paper, it really was a lot of fun. I had so many great comments and listening to you guys that, you know, just kept me in stitches for quite a while yesterday and this morning. So, thank everybody for the response. I will tell you, before I put that video out, I really was torn whether I wanted to talk about that or not. So I asked you-know-who about it. And I thought, I probably should let her watch it first. That was probably a mistake. So after she watched it, she de she definitely voted on the side of, no, I don't think you should put that out there. No. Nah. But I have to tell you, the response to that thing has been hilarious. So anyway, thank you, everybody. It, it was a lot of fun. I'm going to try to do more of that kind of stuff. We'll see where that really goes. So, um, but I do have a funny story to tell you today, too. Ooh, I'm on a roll. I now have, let me see if I can adjust this just enough. I don't think you can quite see it. But right there behind the toilet paper, right there, that's my drill press. Right here by the back door, or the door going out into the house. Uh, this, anyway, that, I just moved it there on Monday. Today's Saturday. It has been sitting in the back corner over here, the armpit of the shop, the messiest place, and it's hard to get to sometimes, and... That's where the foghorn is, the, the furnace. Anyway, it's sat back there since, I think probably since day one when I moved in here. So, but since Monday, I have either gone back there to get something from the drill press area or tried to put something away and I'd walk all the way back there and all of a sudden see this empty spot and go, oh, oh yeah. And I had to walk all the way back over here. I think today, I finally am starting to get go there first, but we'll see how that really goes. So, Anyway, that's my funny story of the day. I can't seem to figure, I can't seem to remember where the hell I put that darn thing. So uh, I'm sure that never happens to anybody else. So, anyway, today I thought I'd do a quick update on some of the projects that I've done over time. And first day, let me start mention that if you watched any of my videos from the past and are starting to think, I wonder how that's working now. Because I do that all the time with other people that watch their projects. And then a year later, I wonder, I wonder how that's doing, and I'll ask them. So if I have any projects out there that you've seen me do a while back, but you don't know how it's really working out, give me a holler and ask me, because I probably have the information. I just forgot to, to share it with you guys that it might be interested in. It. So anyway, a quick update on a couple of quick things. Um, if you remember my... I've been playing with lasers for some time now. I'm trying to get them mounted on all different things around the shop. And this is the one I used originally from Harbor Freight. Um, and I did probably eight or nine, ten projects using this laser line. You know, which is just a, a line marker. So anyway, then when I did the uh, miter saw, the thing was uh, a lot harder. There's no way I could do this. I'd have to take the stand off completely and make something, but I didn't like the battery setup. And as, and I will tell you, when, since I put that on there, with the three AAA batteries instead, what I did is I bought, instead of using the Harbor Freight for four or five bucks, I bought the laser light bullet with just empty wire, and I bought the three AAA battery box here, which has an on and off switch on it, so between these two, I was able to make the laser light. And it works real well. I've left it on overnight even. Uh, since I put that together, what, a month or two ago? I've never had to replace this battery. Thank goodness, because those watch batteries are a pain in the butt. When this one, you leave it on for a couple hours, the battery would have been dead. So this has been really nice. And I've even left it on overnight. And I've left it on for two or three hours at a time, more than once. And it's still there. It still works. So I love it. AAA battery with this bullet is much, much better for longevity of your power source. So you might want to keep that in mind that if you do that, this is much better than the original Harbor Freight. Also, on that machine, I noticed that this line marker was, I'm going to get it all set and everything, and then I get use it after a while. And I don't know whether it's after two turns or after ten times I use it, but I noticed that Eventually, that marker has moved off of its point. And the reason is, is that this one is real tight on that turning to move that line. But this one actually moves pretty reasonably easy. And I think it vibrates and moves. So I'm going to set it back to where it's got to be. I got to just take it off two bolts. 
and then I'm going to take it once it's been set. I'll take it off, and I'm going to drop some crazy uh, CA glue right on the seam between, so that it doesn't spin anymore. And let that dry out, and we'll see if that helps it keep it in alignment. It probably will. So if you do this, you might want to think about the old CA glue drop on it. Uh, if you make one of the same. So that's just the one thing I've noticed. Other than that, the thing has been great. I would love to move this box in a little bit better place to be able to reach to it and not to turn it on and off maybe. But as it stands, that's not a it's not a make or break problem. But eventually I may try to find a place to put more wire on it and get this up closer to where it's easy to turn it on and off type of thing. So anyway, keep that in mind. And if you put yours on, you put it in a different spot. Let me know where you how you did yours. I'd be interested in hearing any new ideas about it. So, but I love it. It's been a great addition to that Midas saw that I've had for 18 years probably. And after I put this on there, boys, it's so much nicer having the laser on it. So, anyway, that's up to you. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is I know what it was. No, what was it? Oh, I do want to talk about this. This was the old push stick. From my uh, gripper video the other day. This was the original. And I had the all chewed up. From the saw blade chewing it up. It had sandpaper and all. So I made a new one. I made just this piece here. And I did make it only one inch across. And two inches this way. This was an inch and a half by two. I still put the bird's mouth on the end. And I put a thin layer of silicone on here. But I will tell you, it took four days for this to get to a point where it's not tacky anymore. I I don't remember it taking that long before. But anyway, I've got it smeared on here, and I've got a nice level of it here. And it does a great job at this point of really gripping and holding this when I... Whoa, almost spilled the coffee. When you start to move it, it really grips just as good as my gripper does. The handle, I had to revamp it slightly. Oh, the heel... I had to revamp this just ever so slightly because when you turn it this way and it's down, that works great. But because this is more narrow across this way, you can't turn it sideways or it can interfere here. So you ha I really have to turn it up. So I don't have the double heel, only the single. But it's just a piece of wood, a rectangular shape. And so I can replace this as needed. And most of the time, it's just going to set up out of the way if I need it. A quick turn. And I'm ready to use the heel if I need it. Even if I'm in the middle of a cut, I can reach down there and turn that if I need to before I finish my cut. If I think I need to get the heel on there. So this makes it really nice and versatile for this unit. So I'm probably going to use this a lot now. And I think it's going to be a, a little bit of an improvement over the old version. Definitely better grip. But I think I'm also going to like it being a little bit more narrow than the inch and a half. So we'll see. Uh, if this works out, I'm probably going to cut a second piece like this and go ahead and put the silicone on it and let it sit on the shelf. So when this one finally gets chewed up, however long this takes, I'll be able to switch them out and then I can re-silicone this one while I'm using the other one because it'll already be cured. So I'll be able to switch it out instantly. So I may make a second one and have a place to set it so that it's ready to go for the switch between the two because switching it out is just a couple of three screws. And I switch it from that one to this one. Anyway, that's one of my favorite push sticks now. And I, we used to be before. I love the gripper. But between this one and the gripper, that's probably what I use 99% of the time at the table saw. So, do um, you have any comments about it or anything? You can leave them in the comment section. I do love them reading them. You probably have your own favorite stick too, but this is kind of nice because it does both the bird mouth pointer as well as all the way over the full piece, holding it down, pushing it through. So uh, anyway, I'm rambling. I want to thank you for stopping by. I had these updates. If there are any updates on anything that I've done here that you want to get a uh, word in on, one more thing I almost forgot. So before I forget, also... My overhead trolley and dolly with the uh, TV hanging on the overhead rail. I put that electric reel cord right there and hooked it up to the dolly so it retracts into the reel back and forth. So there's never any slack or cord getting in the way. That thing has turned out to be very nice setup. This works very, very well. So I do need to put a brake on it.
so that whenever I put it somewhere, it stays right there. Because it does tend to drift a little bit, an inch or two sometimes, when it's just sitting. And I, But anytime I want to move it, it's so easy to move this out of the way. One side is my TV. On the back side is one of my tool walls. And that two videos coming up is I'm going to do one on my how I use a tool wall advantage for my tools. But anyway, it's a whole theme. Uh, that one's coming up pretty quick. Also, I'm going to do one on my van build. Since I've got all the stuff out, I think I'll take you out there with me. We'll go sit in the van so you can get an idea of the scale and get a look at some of the things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to go over some of the ideas of how I'm going to do all the different components of this van build. So, and see what you think and maybe get some ideas back from you. So, suggestions are always welcome here. And once in a while, I even listen to them. So... Uh, I do appreciate it. If you like this video or you learned something here, hit that like button. It always helps and lets me know I'm doing the right thing. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again soon.